Samuel chapter 7. We're going to look at just a, a short passage found there today and, and we'll just go from there. Amen. Are uh, y'all glad to be here? Amen. Amen. I want y'all to pray. We have a lot of people. Some are sick and some are traveling in a way, but we have a lot of them that are not here today and we just uh, want to pray for a safe return for them. And uh, Sister Sherry texted me this morning. She's really sick, vomiting and all that stuff, throwing up and, and just sick stomach issues and other things just pray for sister sherry uh we also have many other little things that people have asked us to pray for that god knows all about it uh, brother mitch was talking about several in his family and and just people ever in general we just want to pray and just ask god i'm glad y'all here today uh the lord told me something and i promised him i'd tell you and so uh, but i'm glad you're here and uh, in chapter 7 of first samuel uh, we're going to find the, our text and find uh, where it is we need to go. Uh, the children of Israel, of course, about any, any place in Scripture, you, you flip this thing over there and you find them, uh, in the Old Testament in particular and in the New Testament for sure, uh, you find that they are somewhere where they ought not to be, where the Lord did not intend them to be. I mean, you guys got to think about this. I mean, Israel was a, was a nation that God chose and, and said, you are special people to me. And, and you're, in fact, you're the very apple of my eye, putting a lot of confidence in you and a lot of, a lot of hope in you. And, and what they have done is they have all through the years, even to the very day in which we live, they have done everything but what God wanted them to do. I mean, it's just been thousands of years after thousands of years, and they just haven't gotten it right. They are rebellious stiff-necked people who just won't hear what the Lord has to say. Kind of reminds me maybe of the day we're living in. Are you one of those people that are hard-headed and it's going to take more than has happened to convince you and change your mind about what's going on in your life? Because there is a right way to live and there is a, a right way to do. And I, I'll tell you right now, instead of looking around and, and talking about the good men we know, we ought to talk about the good God we serve. Amen. Amen. He's good and he's worthy to be called that. So uh, I just hope you'll listen uh, today and just uh, maybe the Lord will speak something to you, say something to your heart. Uh, and so we'll just begin reading in verse 3 of chapter 7. It said, And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, and then put away the strange gods and Asteroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Asteroth and serve the Lord only. The preacher preached, the people listened. That's going to be temporary. I mean, I thank God for a, for a, a change of heart there in the, in the days and the moments that the message was being preached. But it didn't take long for them to forget the message. And it's the same way with man today. We, we forget the message. We forget the message that uh, we can stand and preach all we want to. We can, we can hear the gospel from different perspectives, but I just want to tell you, if we're not going to listen to it, it don't do us much good to hear. It would have been better had we not heard it all to hear and not heed what we hear. Amen? So I just want y'all to listen a little bit today about this message because uh, what God's doing is making an appeal to his people. He's making an appeal to his people to give up. Uh, one thing God says, and you see it right there, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's one thing the Lord put at the top of the list. I, I'm a jealous God. I don't, I don't want you running after these other gods and these other things in your life. I don't want nothing in your life more important than me. And that's, that's the way it's got to be for us. And for we who will decide today that we're going to walk with the Lord, if you can't put God first, you can't walk with the Lord. Amen. I mean, if, what, what meaning will it have to you if God is not the most precious thing in all the world to you? And that's, that's what we've got to realize. That's what we've got to capture and what we've got to get a hold of because this is a preparation. This is a preparation for days to come. This is a preparation for the trying times that Set are set before us when, when men are, are, are rapidly turning away from that that we call is good and that that we call is God's word. It, we've got to have somebody that will stand up in the day and bring a word from the Lord. Amen? Amen. And that's God, that's you, and that's me, and, and that's us together. We're going to do it. 
Our children may not like us. Our grandchildren may not like us. Our neighbor may not like us. But we're going to stand up on the word of God in that only. And we're going to walk with the Lord no matter what. It may not be politically correct, but I'm telling you, we've got to have a generation that will clean their heart out. Amen. amen. If y'all believe that, say amen real loud. Amen. amen. I'll tell you right now, I believe that. I believe every word of it. And, and I, I just, I'm amazed. I just, I can't figure nothing out anymore. I can't figure people out. But I don't have to figure God out. He knows everything. I'm just going to trust Him. So here, let's just take this message apart. Samuel spoke unto the house of Israel saying, If you return to the Lord with all your heart. Yet, what's the biggest word in that sentence? Oh. If. If. Talking about it. I mean, you got to do it. <laughs> Everybody says that, uh, preacher, I've turned over a new leaf. I feel like my life's going needs to go in another direction. Uh-uh. No. No, that's not where we want to go. Amen. We don't want to turn over no more new leaves. We've got enough of them turned over already. We, we, we need to start somewhere where we, we mean what we say and our intention are never to give up, never to quit. Right. That we're going to fight, we're going to fight the giant. Because he is a giant. Goliath is our giant. We got to fight the giant in our day and in our hour. How many of you want to be giant fighters? Amen. Hey, I, I want to be. Hey, there you go. Praise the Lord. Hey, I want to be a giant fighter. I, I want to knock the big boy down. Amen. Because I want to stand up and, and just let him know that, that we are tired of his defacing and defiling our God. And we are tired of hearing his mess. We're going to stand up and attack the gates of hell. Amen. Amen. And going to be happy about it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and just get on the glory train and ride. Uh, we, Judy and I were going, coming to the funeral the other day. And we, we heard the train go, whoop. It's a strange noise in Tabor City. I thought about the train cranking up for Jesus. Whoop. Let's get on the glory train. Amen. And ride the glory train. We're going to ride. We're going to ride the glory train. Amen. Listen to me. I'm, I'm so excited. I, I'm good. Some said I'm going to get excited and, and, and tell everybody about it. And that's, that's what we got to do. But here it is. The message said, if. It's like, I'm telling you right now, uh, men miss these little words, and I miss them sometimes. But it, if. If we don't do anything, we, we're going to leave here the same way we come in that door this morning. I mean, God can come and speak to you, show up to you, encourage you, do anything. We can sing the songs and you can like them. We can preach the message and you may not like it or you may. But whatever, we can do anything here. It may have pleased you in the moment, but it is. If, if you don't do something before you leave, then I, I'll tell you something. You might pick up a nugget here or there. But if you don't do something before you leave, uh, then you've wasted your time. You really have. And, and somebody needs to tell you that. It ain't just faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. James said, if we hear only, then we have dead faith. You see, that's that if. If we take what we hear and we begin to apply it, use it, then that's faith. That's active faith. That we, we believe, so therefore we went and be started to do. If. And so, uh, so I just wanted to bring that, break that down for you. I'm not trying to be simple. But look here, we got to start somewhere, amen? We got to start somewhere. Let's start with if. If you do return unto the Lord with all your heart, then put away the strange gods and Astaroth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord. Amen. You see, uh, prepare your heart unto the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistine. You know, the Philistines, that's where the giants came from. You remember, uh, you, you remember that? Goliath was a Philistine. There were five of those Philistine brothers. Uh, and they were giants, all of them giants. Uh, I wish we had them for our church uh, basketball team, amen? <laughs> but they're not. David killed all of them, so we can't, uh, you know, and when David was around, uh, those Philistines were in, in trouble. And, but he killed all of them. But, but they were Philistines, and they, they worried the children of Israel all the time. They, they come over there, and, and they bullied them. That's bullying in the Bible. If you want to, uh, some bullying verses, go to, to the giants, the Philistines. They bullied Israel all the time. 
And so uh, God would raise up like Samson. God raised up Samson to fight the Philistines. Samson would rather be running after women than fighting the Philistines, and that's why he got in trouble. And so, and what are we in trouble for? We'd rather be running somewhere other than fighting the Philistine, and our Philistine is Satan himself and his messenger. We'd rather be running after these worldly causes and worldly things other than fighting the giants of that rising up against the family of God. Amen. And so uh, what, we got, what we need to do is raise up uh, a group of black belts. And if we take that in that sense, we need to raise up some fighters who will fight and, and fight, stand there and fight no matter what so that we can see the delivering hand of God as God delivers us from our enemies. Amen. And it's going to take a change of heart. <laughs> I'm glad I got that out. It took all that breath to say that. It's going to take a change of heart. See? If we will have a change of heart. That's what this is all about. Where is your heart at today? I, I don't, you know, it don't matter what size dress we wear or, or how big our britches. don't matter uh, what, what our house looks like we live in. Where is your heart at today? Where is your heart? I mean, what is you do? What are you dote about in your heart this morning? What, what is, uh, you, you stop and think about it. Uh, terms of endurance. We, uh, as they relate to the heart. Uh, you know, uh, last night the movies constantly were, were love stories. Mainly, uh, so, so, you know, we're coming up, it's love time. And you know, they, some old relationship that got rekindled. I mean, and y'all sit there and, and you know, you get a little cheer. I, I like it when, when things work out, amen? I like it when, when the... They, you know, this young couple, for example, this young couple, uh, they got married and the daddy met them. They eloped and the daddy met them and took the girl and said, I, we, I want better for her and I hope you understand it. And so they go off and 15 years later, they come back and together. And, and I, I just love that. Yeah. I love to see people who, for whatever reason or another, got their feelings hurt somewhere or thought they did and, and went over there got strung out. I like to see them come back through the door and with a cheerful, uh, we join back together in fellowship. Hey, I like to see that because I want to tell you something. God wants us to renew ourselves in Him. God wants us to put the, that old stuff out of our heart. He wants us to renew ourselves in our heart so that we can walk with Him and walk with Him as His, as his children. Amen. So that we don't have to carry all this myth. Israel, I'm telling y'all what's the truth. Israel did not have to endure all that they had to endure because in their heart they chose to do what God told them not to do. And many of you are doing that. Many of us have done that. Many of us get bullheaded with God. The Bible calls it stiff neck. In other words, you won't bow, you won't, you won't turn. Hey, we get stiff neck. We got hard headed and hard hearted. We get callous hearted toward our fellow man. And the and very day you get a callous on your heart toward your fellow man, you, the Bible says if you do it to the least of these, my children, you do it to me, so you might as well be doing it to God. Amen. And see, that's the thing we don't realize. But I, I absolutely, Brother Buck, I'm convinced in my spirit we're going to get to where we need to be. And I'm going to tell you, when that, when that thing finally gets over there, it's like putting a car in gear, when that thing finally meshes up and clicks, I'm telling you, you better, better get out of the main highway. You're going to get run over. I'm telling you, when it finally comes together and we realize uh, the God we serve, the power that God has in our life and has given to us, we've had a change of heart, not just a change of circumstances. Woo! And we've been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. All hell can rise up. We're going to fight them. We'll get us five little rocks and knock them down every time. We'll just stand on the Word of God and go and win the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. Woo! Hallelujah! Amen. I just believe that. Bless God. I'm tired of wimpy. Aren't y'all tired of wimpy? I'm, I'm tired of these little preachers that ain't never had a callus on their hand. I, they got more on their butts than they have anywhere else. We need some callous-handed preachers that are getting to work. We need some callous-hand deacons that are in the work of the Lord. We need some callous-hand Christians that, that are, are going to work, work, work till Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. I'll just go ahead and enjoy it myself. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'll just get that tape. Whenever he gets loaded up, I'll just watch it myself and I'll enjoy it all over again. Amen. I, I want y'all to enjoy it. 
I want y'all to, to get to enjoy it. The, the Lord told Samuel to speak to the people. He said he's spoken to them. And y'all remember who Samuel was? He was his mother was the woman who had no son. And she prayed God gave her Samuel. And then she said, if you'll give me a son, I'll give him to you. How many, we got some young sons here today. How many of you mothers would give them sons to Jesus? That mother left him literally with Levi. Left him literally, uh, Eli. Uh, just left him there with the man of God. And he rose up and now here he is a prophet. How many of you want your sons to be a prophet? How many want your sons to carry the word of God? Not just near but far. How many of you want your sons not to go to the University of North Carolina, but want them to find Jesus on their knees and rise up to speak to a dying nation that's on her way to hell? How many of you want that? Hey, well, don't raise your hand if you don't mean that. I'm telling you something. We need somebody that will believe if we'll clean out our heart. God can use us. Amen. Strange God. You see, what happens is, we, in our nation, we have people who brought their gods when they came. And, and so our, the, the population of America, people have all kind of gods in America. And these gods are fighting for notoriety. Did y'all realize that? Yes, they are. They're fighting. They want, they want to be the God. They want to be uh, the God of America. And I'm telling you, somebody's got to stand up and declare who we are. Somebody's got to be Joshua. Somebody's got to say, it's from me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Hey, hear you, O Israel. There's but one God. And, and I'm going to tell you, that is, that's it. There's not a God for you and a God for me. Hey, my God is God and he's over all. He's sovereign. He's all. He's our God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want to tell you right now. And, and so we just, we need.